Hello, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> Welcome to this week's coaching webinar. I, uh, I'm sure there's more people going to be coming here. I see a, a few of you guys for now, but uh, let's uh, well, let's see how everybody's doing. Um, let me see here. I'll start with you, George. How are you doing, buddy? Is that you or is that uh, Stan? George? All right. Mute him out. Um. Colleen, how are you? Hello. Yeah, I'm good, you? Tim. Good. 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 Glad, glad you made it on the webinar today. Yeah, I'm very interested in this topic, so very excited about what you guys have to say. Okay, well, that's awesome. We'll have some fun today. <laughs> All right, um, I'm going to mute you out now and uh, say hi to Gilda, and we'll get started, okay? All right, thanks. Hello, Gilda, how are you? Do you have your mic? All right, maybe not. <laughs> All right, y'all, well, I am just going to go ahead and get started now. Um, well, today you are going to learn how to make a fortune flipping foreclosures and oils with no money down, no credit, with no money, no credit, and no experience. <laughs> well, by the time that you finish with the webinar today, you will have some experience. And um, there's no doubt, you know, flipping oils is a... Uh, it's a it's a it's one of the hotter, if not the hottest, um, type of houses to flip or type of deals to flip. Mainly because you're dealing with the banks and you're dealing with real estate agents, and so you don't have as much control over you know, over the deal. You don't have control of which title company to use. You don't have control in terms of you know um, how you can charge fees to, 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 you know, you're, you're limited to where, how you can charge fees to, to buyers, and you certainly can't charge any fees to the seller. And so um, a lot of the creative stuff that we are able to do when we are dealing directly with the homeowner, we're not able to do with REOs. Okay, and so those are some of the challenges, but here's, here's the good news about REOs, is that with REOs, the, the uh, owners are banks. And, 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 and so what that means is that they, they, they have no emotions in these deals. It's just you know, straight numbers for them. And you know, however, whoever that they feel can give them the best deals, whether in, you know, in terms of the fastest closing, the, the, you know, the, the least trouble, or uh, the most amount of money, or a combination of those things, is how, you know, is how they make the decisions. And so... It's a lot. Uh, it's a lot more straightforward. You know, you don't have a non-cooperative seller that you know won't uh, won't submit certain amount of information or won't whatever. Or, you know, decide at the last minute at closing that they want to back out of the deal. You don't have those issues here with bank. They're pretty straightforward. Um, and uh, you know, but how? Um, however, the the oil business, the challenge with this business um, also too is that because most of these houses are listed on the MLS. And um, you know, most of this house, these houses are listed on, on the MLS, and so uh, they are exposed to a lot of different buyers out there on the MLS. So um, if you are you know, going to the deals on the MLS directly, um, you are competing with a lot of people. And so there's a high chance that you won't... Uh, you know that that you won't be able to get a a great deal out of it, it's, and um you know, and sometimes too is that uh, you don't make as much money per deal with these oils either. You know, anybody that I know that does volume with these oils, they only make a few thousand dollars a deal, but they make it up in volume. You know because like I said, you are competing with a lot of people out there. Um, yeah, because you know the MLS is easy access, right? Any real estate agent can get access to that, uh, or anybody who has access to the MLS can get access to that. And so, 
Um, so those those are some of the challenges. I want to let you know up front of those challenges, and uh, you know, and that's why OIOS is not a very um, it's not a very um, widely taught topic out there. Uh, it's because you know there are a few people who who crack the code in OIOS, but it's not uh, it's it, like I said, it is a more uh, difficult. Uh, strategies to do. However, once you know how to do it, and it took us months. I mean, literally, it took us um, like learning the process well over six months to 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 you know to learn all of the ins and outs, learn about how you know how how the real estate agents play game, how the banks play games, and you know to like really learn all of the the insider stuff that uh, you don't get to see. The behind the scenes stuff, and so it took us even as experienced as as you know uh, I am and 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 my partner is it still took us like a long time to learn these things so um you know so so you know you do have to get through that, but once you get through that, you know once you get through that though um the opportunity is just amazing out there right now you know, there's just so many oils uh, um out there right now. And um, you know, and so you can get them, and you can you know you you can get them for a decent price and sell them to uh, um, uh, you know to to other investors, and uh, and so it's um, I mean it, it's you know it's it's doable, and I'm going to teach you guys how um, how we go about doing them. Okay, all right. So first, let me uh, go back and explain to you guys real quick sort of the process of of how these things work. You know, when when uh, when the homeowner is you know is behind on their payments. They are considered as being in pre foreclosure. Okay, now they are not officially in the pre foreclosure in terms of like having a notice filed against them or or having um, um, you know the bank start the foreclosure proceeding process until about uh, about three months after they they are behind. So it, it depends too if if uh, if it's an investment property. Uh, then you know, af after a couple months, they'll start the foreclosure pro you know, uh, proceeding process. But um, for if it's a if it's an owner occupant um, uh, 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 an owner occupant uh, um, home, then they normally start the foreclosure proceeding process uh, three months after the the home owners behind. That's when they send it over to the foreclosure department, and then from there. Of course, they give the uh, the homeowner a chance to uh, to uh, reinstate that loan. Um, however, if they don't reinstate it, then about uh, five to six months after they are uh, you know, after they are behind, uh, it's when the bank will go ahead and file the the um, you know here in Texas it's called the the notice of trustee sale. Uh, if you, you know, if if you're in a um, a judicial state. A judicial state meaning that they, you know, the bank has to take the homeowner to uh, to the court in order for them to uh, foreclose on a property, like Florida, for example. Then, you know, then a list pendants will, will be filed. Uh, here in, in Texas, we are a non-judicial state. That means that you know, no court is needed to foreclose on a property. And also, too, here in Texas, our process is pretty fast. Um, the the um, um, we we have an we have an auction date that happens on the first Tuesday of each month, regardless what month it is. You know, even if it falls on a Christmas or or a uh, or a New Year, it doesn't matter. It's the first Tuesday of every single month, and so um, banks and their attorneys, uh, whoever is doing the foreclosure, um, you know, foreclosure. Has to file the notice of trustee sale 21 days, uh, at least 21 days before that. Okay, and so you know, so that means that um, for our, um, you know, yeah, whatever the next first Tuesday of the month is, if you go back three weeks later, that's 21 days before that. Then that's when they have to file the notice of trustee by. And you know, and and so. Um, so once they file that, that's still in pre foreclosure. Okay, uh, foreclosure doesn't happen until the day of the auction. So if the homeowner still don't uh, bring the loan current, then um, then um, 
when when the, the and the homeowner has up until the time that the uh, that the trustee um, you know foreclose on the house. So for example, if the if the if the foreclosure or the the auction schedule for say uh, 2 p.m. on that Tuesday, that means that any time up until 2 p.m. before the trustee starts the uh, uh, the auction, the homeowners can still bring the loan current and get the house out of foreclosure. But at 2 p.m. when the when the trustee and, and the auction happens really fast, okay. And so once the auction once the trustee is done with the auction, then the homeowner cannot uh, cannot reinstate his loan anymore. You know the only way the um, the homeowner you know can do something like that would be if they uh, file for bankruptcy the day of that auction. Okay, but um, you know once um, yeah so once it's once it's um, you know, once it's auctioned off, then then the homeowner doesn't have a chance uh, to uh, to to reinstate anymore. And so on that auction day, that's when that's when the status change from pre foreclosure to foreclosure. Okay, and then um, and then if if nobody bid, because the the bank will also bid a certain amount too. Um, and so, if nobody bids above the bank's uh, amount, uh, bidding amount, um, then the bank will get the house back. Okay, um, and yeah, and and so, so in today's market where there's just so many foreclosures out there, banks are getting houses back, you know, by uh, I don't know how, I mean, you know, thousands, um, you know, you know, tens of thousands of you know of of, of homes. Um, are, are coming back to the bank, you know, every single month, um, and so, you know, and, and you know, and and so they're, they're getting a lot of back, a lot of them back, and if uh, you know, if 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 the, the if the loan is owned by the bank, uh, and it's not insured by HUD or anything, that becomes that now becomes a bank-owned property, or um, or you know, it's often referred to as a real estate-owned property. Okay, that means that now the bank owns it. Now, if a property is insured by HUD, and uh, you know, of course, HUD is um, um, housing urban development by the government. If uh, if HUD insures that loan, then what that's going to happen is HUD is going to pay the bank 82% of whatever the BPO is for that property. So let's say the BPO for that property is 100,000. That means that HUD is going to pay the bank 82,000, and now HUD owns the property, and then HUD will try to sell it. Okay. Um, and uh, if VA is the one that guarantees the loan, then uh, you know, then 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 that um, that loan would that house would now belongs to VA, and VA uh, VA is not a it's not an insurance. They they actually it's it's actually guaranteed, so they pay the bank. Uh, the you know the entire amount of um, you know what is owed to the bank, okay, and and so now VA owns the property, and um, and of course everybody is trying to then sell it in the foreclosure market or on the MOS, um, and you know the bank and REOs their selling process are very similar. Uh, with HUD, they they go through this auction thing first before. You know, they 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 always want to allow for uh, for normal homeowners to have a chance to buy it first for the first for the first couple of weeks before they before they open it up to the real estate investor market to buy. And so when when a HUD home first become available, when a HUD home first become available, um, you know it it only goes to the homeowner unless it needs a lot of repairs. Then it goes you know directly to investors. But uh, most HUD homes. Um, you know, are open to to uh, to the homeowners first, okay? And so that's the um, you know that, that's sort of the the uh, the process that a that a foreclosure property or a pre foreclosure property uh, go through, okay? So how do you find these REOs? The uh, you know the most common place to uh, you know that almost everybody go to to find these REOs is just on the MOS. And so, if you have access to the MOS, then you log in to them, you do your search, and boom, you have it. Okay. Now, like I said, you know the, uh, the 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 challenge with the MOS is you are competing with a lot of people. 
So you have to really know how to, you know, how to pre-screen for these deals, uh, and 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 find the deals that you know that that you are not that you don't have much competition, or that uh, perhaps other people are just not bidding on it at this time. Or find a property that needs a lot of repairs, you know, because a lot of people stay away from that also. Okay. Um, DoDeals.com is another place that you can find them. Where we get our leads is we we um, we we we, uh, we we get them from from different banks' websites. You know, many different banks out there, and yeah, and we go to their website. So whatever they post on theirs is where, where we have it. Um, most of the properties, by the time it gets on their website, it's it's also on the MLS as well. Okay, it's just that you know with due deals that you don't need to have MLS access to get access to those properties. Uh, you can. Um, you know, you can you can access those properties directly and deal deal with the, the 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 realtors that are listing it. Sometimes you will be dealing with the banks directly too. I've done you know I've done that in the past, um, where you know, I call the number listed and you know it's uh, someone in the REO department at that bank um, just um, you know is willing to deal directly with uh, with a buyer and so. You know, so that happens also um, sometimes when you when you're calling leads on due deals, and then um, and then you can also, and this is probably the most um, you know the most crucial part of uh, of of the audio, uh, you know the audio wholesaling business is to build relationship with uh, with top realtors in the area that uh, specialize in listing audios. Okay, and so you want to find out in your area. You know who are the top ten um, real estate agents that list REOs, and you want to go to their office. You want to take them to lunch. You want to do what you can to get to know them, okay? And you know, uh, like really building build a relationship with them. Of course, the uh, the best way to build a relationship is to to successfully close a deal with them, okay? And so. You know, so the you know, so the first deal that you do with them, make sure you are very careful with the deal. Make sure it's a deal that you're gonna go through. You know, the minute they accept your offer, you don't want to you know, to to be in a be in a, a situation where you you know you end up not having the buyers and then you can't close on the deal and then you lose that relationship with them. So it's very very important that you know that that you do a um, a good job on your first deal with them to build that relationship, okay? Cause, you know, because that relationship is how you'll be able to get more and more deals. So, you know, very, very important for you to um, for you to do that. And and then um, the um, once you build relationship with them. Um, a lot of them will give you their pre-list. These are lists of properties before they put it on the MOS. Some of the pre-lists that we get, they are even they even have properties before they even foreclose on the property. So we know about these properties like way ahead of time, okay? And you know, and and so whenever they have a pre-list like that, of course, if they already foreclose on it. Then it's easy for you to make offers to them, um, and you know, and, and and you don't have as much competition because uh, you you know, I mean, you are a few of the people that they're giving that list to, uh, and so you're you're competing with whoever their best clients are. Okay, and so there's a you know very good chance for you to get those deals, but uh, but for you to get those deals, you have to act very quickly too. Sometimes they'll tell us in the morning. And by the afternoon, um, if we don't, we, if we, you know, if we haven't uh, um, turned in an offer to them by by noontime, by the afternoon it's gone. So you get, you have to act really quick. You have to know. And I'll talk about knowing your market uh, in a little bit here. But you know, once you once once you get a, an, an address of a property, you have to pretty much know. Okay, I have buyers in that neighborhood. They'll pay around this much, and so if I can get it for this amount. We, you know, we should be good to go. And so you, you know, the, the minute you see an address, 
um, you already have a really good clue on whether or not you can do that deal, and you have to act really quick on on these uh, on these pre list And the uh, a, a, another way that you can also get pre list too uh, is driving for dollars. Okay. Um, Unlike the normal driving for dollars, where you're drive, driving neighborhoods and you're looking for for sell, you know, uh, for sell signs, um, this one you're looking for vacant houses, looking for signs of vacant houses that has a black lockbox um, on the door, but has no realtor sign. What happened is that you know every time uh, a house is foreclosed on, the uh, the bank sends out somebody to change the locks on the house. And when they change out the lock, they put the lockbox code on there. Okay? Um, and so, you know, and, and so the, the banks have this pretty standard black lockbox um, that, uh, you know, that, that they use. And so if you, see, uh, if you see a sign, I mean not a sign, um, if you see a lockbox, um, a black lockbox, but you don't see any sign. There's a high chance that that's a foreclosure property, that's a bank-owned property, but hasn't been listed on the MLS yet. Um, you know, there's a high chance that it hasn't even been assigned to a real estate agent yet. Okay. And so what you're going to then do there is you're going to track down that address and find out which bank it is that for that, that that owns that property now, and you're going to call up that bank's REO department. And you're going to ask them. You're not going to ask them to buy the house from them. What you're going to ask them is, you know, ask them, hey, um, you know, I, uh, I, I, I see that you have this house that you foreclosed on. Um, can I have the contact info to your to the real estate agent that will be listing the property because I'm interested in making an offer on it. Okay. And so, you you know, don't try to deal with the, directly with the bank because a lot of time uh, banks already delegated to their real estate agent, and so they don't really want to deal with you. They want to get you off their phone as soon as possible because they, you know, a lot of people call them um, to wanting to deal with them directly. Most banks, they already, with the exception of smaller banks, you know, smaller banks are more, more, uh, more likely to be willing to deal with you, but the bigger banks, they already, you know, they, they already um, um, delegated this out to the real estate agents, and so they, they have no interest in handling these transactions themselves. And so it's best if you just ask them for the contact um, info for the real estate agent that is going to be listing the house. Um, and so they, they're going to give you that, and they're happy to give you that. And so you're going to contact the agent and say, hey, agent, you know, I, um, I, I just talked to the bank, and they said that you'll be the one that, uh, that will be handling this house. Um, before you know, before you have this house ready for sale, can you let me know? So I would like to make an offer on it before you put it on the MOS. I would like to make an offer on it as soon as I can, as soon as it's available for sale. And I don't have a real estate agent, um, and so I want you to keep you know the full commission. Uh, you know, I don't want any part of it, so you can keep the whole five or six percent commission that the bank's giving you uh, to represent them and me. And so. So you want you want to tell those agents that, and by doing that, you know, of course the agents would love it, right? Why would they want to list on the MOS and 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 get three percent of the commission? Um, you know, why not let you have a chance to make an offer on that property, um, and so that way they can get the full commission and keep the whole six percent commission. Okay, uh, that's called pocket listing before they put on the MOS. And what's going to happen there is that if the bank you know, if if the uh, if the bank um, uh, do approve your your uh, offer, they still gonna have to put it on the MOS. But when they put it on the MOS, they don't have to put it on active. They can they'll put it on on pending. Uh, and so once it's on pending, nobody really wants to to make an offer on that house anymore because they see it's it's a contract pending. So they still have to put it on the MOS. It's just that they change the status. Yeah, as soon as they put it on the MOS, they 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 change it to to pending and not active, so that way other people are not you know, knocking on their doors, uh, looking to uh, uh, you know l l looking to try to make an offer. Okay. All right. Um, so you know, so like I said, it's very important that you you know that that 
it's very important that uh, uh, you must know your area. Okay, uh, you must know, you know the, um, um, you, know, you, you, you you must know, you know you, you that whatever area you want to farm in, the, and the the more targeted you are, the more successful you're gonna be at this. You know, if you're trying to, you know, if if you're trying to market it in a um, If, if, if you're trying to 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 do this uh, audio stuff all over town, uh, it's gonna be number one. It's gonna be a lot of work because you'll be you know driving, looking at houses in so many areas. Um, uh, number two is that you're not an expert in that area. So the minute that they tell you an address, you can't tell right away whether or not it's a deal. You would have to do more due diligence. But if you know your area. Then you don't need to do much due diligence. You know, you can pretty much um, you be at 85% certainty that you can do that deal, uh, or even 90% certainty that you can do that deal. I'll give you an example. Uh, one of the guys that I learned how to uh, how to do these REOs from is uh, Lee Kearney, and Lee does a lot of these deals. Um, uh, you know, 10, 15 of these deals a month, sometimes 20 of these deals a month, and even with as much volume that he does, he only focused on three small areas. Okay, um, not all the town. He only focused on three areas, but he knows those areas so well. Before he even, you know, before he even make an offer on the house, he already know which of his buyers going to be buying from him. Okay, so the minute that he sees an address coming in, and he sees the price, he already know whether or not it's a deal for him. Okay, and so you know you have to be very, very targeted um, and know your area very well. And we we do the same thing. We don't uh, you know we, we don't try to go all over town uh, on these either. Okay, we we focus on in on um, only a few areas, uh, you know, for, for it. Okay, and um, you want to know how much you know dollar per square foot those houses sold for. You want to know what the the retail value is. You want to know what the rental value is. You want to know how many days on market it is. Um, you want to know, you know, day, days on market meaning, uh, you know, once a house is on the MLS for sale, how many days does it take for them to sell it? Okay, the the you know the the, the less days on market, the better. You know, like for example, if it's a neighborhood where uh, on an average house takes 90 days or less. That's those are great neighborhoods. That means they sell really well. You know, they sell really well, and they sell very fast. Okay, and you know, and 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 you want to focus in on areas that uh, that still have growth. You know, there, there's still people moving into that area and not you know people move, people moving out of it. Because I mean, you know, you need to be able to sell these houses quickly. Even though you're wholesaling them, you know, you still need to be selling. Uh, you, know, you, you, you you still need to be selling them quickly, and in um, on um, you know in, in from your buyer's perspective, if they were to buy this property and they and they were to fix it up and retail it, they also want to sell want it to sell quickly too. So they want to find good neighborhood. Okay, and so we you know we. Um, we also pay attention to that. You know, is it a growing neighborhood or is it a declining neighborhood where everybody wants to move out of that neighborhood? Um, and um, you know, we want to know how much the houses will rent for. We want to know, um, you know, we we, we want to know, you know, what square footage those houses range from. Um, you know, how much they sell for. We want to know as much information as we can from them. Um, we you know, in um. We also want to know, you know, what are some, of, you know, um, the the tax appraised value on these properties. That's a that's a quick way to uh, to search them too. And uh, of course, you know, uh, you can also use the uh, the due deals uh, value estimator, home value estimator, to allow you to pre-screen them too. I forgot to put that in here, uh, but uh, but yeah, you know, you you want to have a really good idea. You still want to have MRS comps when when possible um you know if, if there's enough time for you to do that 
so that way you can be more certain of you know how much houses has sold for in the last three months. You know, in some neighborhood, um, you know, in some neighborhood, in some market area, you can't even use comps for six months anymore. You know, because uh, you know because the market is changing so fast now, and so it's best if you know you know how much houses are selling for in the last three months. It gives you a much better idea of the value of the homes, and you gotta know your buyers. Okay, you 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 you, know, you, you have to know um, you know who's buying in that neighborhood, who's buying for cash, who's using hard money. Um, you know what are they looking for? Uh, you know how big is the house? Uh, you know uh, what are they doing with it? They looking to retail it? Are they looking to to hold it as a rental? You know, what are, what are your buyers are going to do with these properties? How are they going to fund it? So you have to know these information beforehand. Uh, and the more you know, the better you know, the more leverage you have. You know, this is your competitive uh, you know competitive edge over your competitors. Um, and and you know, because when when you know your neighborhood really well and you know your buyers really well. And you know who's going to buy that property from you before you before you even make an offer. That gives you confidence in how much you're going to offer them. Okay, it gives you confidence in whether or not you'll be able to do that deal, um, and you'll be able to submit offers very very quickly. So the minute that you find out about the deal within an hour, you can already you know send out an offer on it, or, or sometimes you can even send out an offer you know, almost immediately. Okay, um, and and so. Um, so you have to have know, to know your buyers. You have to have your buyers list in place. You know, REOs is one of those things where you can't go from seller to you know you can't uh, focus on sellers first and then go find buyers. Uh, REOs is one of those things where you have to find buyers first and then back your way into um, you know in, into finding the properties. And trust me, buyers are plentiful out there. Uh, there's you know there's there's a lot of buyers out there. There's a lot of cash buyers out there right now. There's a lot of um, you know buyers that um, you know that that use hard money. You know buyers that have have good jobs, uh, have good credit, and you know and and so they can they can uh, can buy it with hard money, fix it up, and then uh, you know and then refinance it and and hold it as long term uh, long term rentals. Okay, there's a lot of them out there. So you gotta start uh, building that buyers list. Okay. So, um, how and when to get you know the best deals? Um, starting with the low hanging fruits is the uh, is the easiest one to start with. And low hanging fruits are deals that are uh, you know that 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 the asking price is already cheap. It's already low. There's you know there's um, there's not much that you need to do with that. So I'll, I'll give you an example. One of the deals that we did, uh, and I'm gonna, um, you know, if let me see if we have time, I'll show you guys the HUD on it later. But um, where the you know the the house was only at, it was it was a it was you know rather new house, and they were only asking uh, sixty thousand dollars on the uh, I think it was sixty. They were asking fifty-seven or sixty. I don't remember. But we made a we made the offer uh, a couple thousand dollars higher than what they were asking. Okay. And uh, because the the price was already low, because we know we already be able to do the deal based on what the price they were asking. So we were willing to even offer them more, uh, so that way anybody who else is trying to offer them less or offer them that same price won't be able to get it, and we'll be able to get it. Okay, and so start with that, and of course, I mean, you're not going to know which one is the low-hanging fruit uh, until you know until you know that area and you know what the value uh, is for that area and what your buyers will pay you for it. You know, because you have to you know, you, you have to have good enough margin to be able to host sell these to your buyers, unless of course you're going to sell it retail, you're going to close on it, fix it up, and sell it retail. That's a different story. Okay. But low hanging fruits is the first place you you you, you know you look for, um, and um, the second is uh, status changes. You see, um, you know, fifty percent or so of deals that get under contract um, end up not not closing on it. 
uh, especially the deals that uh, that get under contract by you know, normal uh, normal buyers and you know, buyers that use a conventional loan or FHA loan. And so you want to pay attention to when that status is going to change. Um, so you, you, know, you, you, you study your neighborhood, and you know pretty much everything that's going on in that neighborhood, and you check it every day. And so when you see a status that changed from pending to active, you're going to um, uh, resubmit your offer to them right away. Okay? Um, you know, it's... it's I mean, you know, it's it's kind of um, it's kind of funny and and you know, inefficient the way you know, in, inefficient the way that uh, some of these realtors do it, but like when they have a property that's active and you're making offers, okay, and and then uh, they they you know they uh, they they change the status or they change the price, they don't contact you back um, to ask you to offer them again. You have to you you have to be proactive in contacting them and resubmitting your offer, okay? And yeah, and so so don't you know don't depend on them to tell you uh, to uh, um, you know to resubmit your offers. You're gonna have to be proactive with that and um, and and do that yourself, okay? So pay attention to status changes. Um, you know, Ray, who's my partner uh, on these REOs. He goes a, he goes a step further, and even when you know, if it's a property that he's interested in buying, uh, even when it the the status is from a change from active to pending, meaning you know pending means that uh, somebody has a contract, okay? He would still contact the agent and tell the agents like, hey, if for whatever reason that deal uh, don't go through can you let me know i would like to uh, make an offer on it All right, this is a this is a property that just got somebody um you know has a contract and so that's a really good idea that you can uh you know you can use in your business as well uh, because now you be in front of everybody before you know instead of waiting for the status to change um even when it's in pending state you are letting the agents know ahead of time that you are interested in making offers on these properties, um, and um, you know, and and so uh, so if if anything doesn't work out in that you know with that property, there's a high likelihood that you'll be able to uh, you'll be able to get it. Okay, um, and the uh, same thing with price changes too. Okay, um, every time you know, uh, they they change the price, they lower the price. You want to resubmit your offer. Um, you know, like I said, you know, even it, you know, so, um, you know, e even if the property is, let's say the prop, let's say they're currently asking a hundred thousand on the property, and you had submitted an offer for ninety-eight thousand dollars before, when they drop their price to ninety-five thousand, they they don't know to contact you, they don't remember to contact you, even though you had you had a higher offer to them before. Or they might not want to waste their time to recontact you because you might, you know, they think that you might have already moved on and found a different uh, property. And so, you know, so constant, you know, you have to, you, you have to make sure that you pay attention to that and uh, and and make your offers. Um, and also check the days on market. The the longer the days on market, the more, you know, the, the more motivated um, the bank is to deal with you. And yeah, and, and just like you know, just like a normal homeowner, okay, they want these banks don't want to own these properties. They want to get out of it as soon as possible. And so, you know, so uh, after you know after 150 days or so, if it hasn't sold yet, you know, the the banks are a lot more willing to um, deal with you, a um, lot more willing to, uh, you know, um, you know, yeah, a lot more willing to to. To lower the price some more, um, and a lot of time they do. You know, after five to six months, uh, they w they will lower down their price, and then every five to six months thereafter, they're going to lower down the price more and more and more. You know, I I've seen a property where it was on the it was on the market for I think it's like two years, that's some long time, but um, the 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 price drop was pretty drastic. It was uh, like uh, like you know, eighty thousand dollars or some big numbers like that. It's been a while since I've, um, you know, uh, you know, since I've seen that 
in your deals. I don't remember the exact number, but I remember the, the price that they initially listed to the price that they sold it at. I think they initially listed like a hundred and forty thousand, you know, hundred thirty something thousand, and they sold at like forty thousand bucks. Okay, so it's drastic, drastic drop in in price, um, you know, uh, and so that happens because you know because uh, banks try to sell it for as much as they can, and they go by the the agent's BPO and. In today's market, where houses drop in price, I mean, if they wait two years later, there's a high chance that that property had already dropped in price, um, uh, you know, significantly. Um, and so, you know, and and so that's why they would, you know, they would be willing to settle for much less uh, when the when the house has been on the market for a long time. So you pay attention to that. And so when you first start out, you're um, you know finding these deals, you know, is, you attack the low hanging fruit. Um, you attack the ones with the, the long days on market. You, know, the, you, you attack the ones that have status and price changes. Uh, you pay attention to um, pay attention to those things. Okay. And um, so next, um, you know, how do you make offers on uh, on these, these properties? You want to always make cash offers on these properties. And you can put hard money in there if, if they ask you for too big of a down payment, uh, uh, earnest money. That's what happens sometimes when you. When you make them cash offers, they want more earnest money. If that happens, then you can change it to a hot money, um, hot money offer. But um, you know, re requiring one to three thousand dollars earnest money is pretty common with these uh, uh, with the with these REOs. Okay, um, and whenever you make an offer for uh, uh, for cash, you know, a lot of times they even want ten percent of uh, of uh, you know of the the, the price as the um, as the earnest money, okay, um, and um, you know, and and so they, they want to make sure that you are a good, you know, a good buyer, a serious buyer that's gonna uh, that's gonna be able to close on it. To so always make you know, always make cash offers. Always uh, you know have quick offers. You know when 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 when, you know, when Ray makes the offers, he um, he he you know he he put in there. He doesn't even put a date in there. He just put ready to close whenever you are, okay? So it tells the agents, it tells the bank that, oh, man, this guy is ready. You know, he has money lined up, and so as soon as we have title work, as soon as everything is ready, he'll be able to close on it. The truth of the matter is none of these banks are ready to close within, you know, seven days. Um, it, it, they'll, they'll take longer than that. But when, when you, um, you know, uh, or even, you know, sometimes even two weeks or more, uh, but even when you even when you put ready to close whenever you are, um, th you know you still have longer than you think to be able to close on it. You know we we had a deal where it took us almost 45 days to close. Okay, we 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 had some challenges on it. And we, you know we we uh, um, we had to make you know we we had, you know, we had to uh, to uh, to uh, re reschedule it to to make it work for us, but. Um, you know they still put up with us. We had to put more earnest money in, but uh, yeah, but but they they gave us the time that we needed to to be able to close on that deal. And so you know, so even though you put a very short, uh, you know, even though you put a very um, a very short uh, period, um, you you know, you're still going to end up uh, having more time than you need. Um, and um, and also too. You know, don't um, don't make your offer subject to inspection. Because chances are, you know, when when you make your offers, the um, the realtor is going to retype the contract, and and the, the you know whether they're using the bank's contract or they're using the state specific contract, there's already a built in a seven day built in uh, inspection period, and so even though when you make an offer to these um, when you make an offer to these uh, these agents, and sometimes you can make verbal offers over the phone. Uh, sometimes you can just send them like a like a letter and tent type of offer. But however you do it, they are going to retype the offer on their own contract and submit it to you. And that and, and those contracts that they use have a built-in inspection, you know, seven-day inspection period for you already. So when you make your offer, you can put you know no no inspection, close whenever you're ready. Okay. Um, you know, you uh, yeah. You should have a you know nice uh, uh, you 
know, cover letter to sort of exp you know, explain your case, okay, of why you, you know, why you're justifying, why you're making the the, the offer, uh, the way you're making it. You know, um, if you can have a repair list, that would be really great, because uh, that that will help you know, help you with your case as well. You know, it justifies your offer to them. Uh, proof of funds. Okay, you, you you have to have proof of funds to to send it to them. Whether you, whether you getting the proof of funds from a, from a, uh, from a transactional you know uh, funding company uh, or your know, proof of funds from your hard money for or wherever or your your bank statement doesn't matter. Uh, show them that that you know, proof of funds and uh, show them a copy of the earnest money too. Okay. You might not be able to. You might not have to submit the earnest money to them right away, uh, but uh, do have a copy of it. So what we do is uh, we, we, you know, we we, uh, we just uh, we buy m uh, money order and we make a copy of the blank money order. And so when we, uh, you know, when we um, uh, make in our offers, because we make a lot of offers, I and mean, we can't be buying, you know, uh, 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 earnest money for for each deal like that. And so. Uh, so, so we, you know, we just write on, uh, you know, we, 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 we write who, you know, who to make it payable to, uh, on the copy, not on the actual money order, uh, on on the copy, and we fax that in. So that way, if that offer get accepted, then then that's the money order that will that will uh, send in. And if we already use that money order on some other deal, then we'll just go buy another money order, you know. Um, and also too, uh, um, you know, if 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 it's your first time dealing with an agent and they don't know you, uh, there's a high chance that they will want to meet up with you to pick up the earnest money from you uh, when you make your offers. But once you build a relationship with them, um, there's a there's a high chance that they will never ask for it. You know, they just assume that you are going to send it to the title company. Uh, but even if you you know don't send it, um, you know they 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 won't remember to ask you and they won't uh, you know they won't care too much to ask you and they'll just uh you know they 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 they'll, they'll just um, uh, they're just waiting to closing and they you know and they wonder okay well w w you know, what what happened to the uh what happened to the money order <laughs> okay and so it's um you know it so it's uh you know what happened to the earnest money and so it's no big deal that uh you know that 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 I mean if you have earnest money readily available, that's great. But you know, technically speaking, you can't do it without earnest money. You have to build a really good relationship with that agent uh, to uh, to be able to do it. Okay. Um, you have your 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 contract that you're making offer on the purchase and sales agreement. Uh, in any addendum that you might need, to have um, you know have that. So have a full package. That you're going to submit it to them, you know, look very professional, because um, you know when you're dealing with banks and you're dealing with those uh, real estate agents, that's what they expect. Okay, uh, they you know they expect a, uh, a professional. They don't want to deal with with amateurs that uh, you know that might not close on the deal. Okay, um, how to get them accepted? Uh, you know, you just have to. Um, you know, offer it to them, you know, ask and you shall receive, okay? And and that is, you know, don't be shy. I mean, make them an offer, whatever offer that that you believe that that will make it work, okay? Um it it doesn't matter if it's uh if it's a um, a uh, uh you know, a lower offer than 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 what they have on there. Um you know, like for us, you know, we try to um you know, we try to make you know, we try to offer them about ten thousand dollar less than what we can sell it for. So that way, we have some more, we have some uh, some some uh, uh, some some room there for closing costs if we have to do double closing and stuff, and still end up making you know still uh, you know end up netting at least five thousand bucks. We don't try to get very greedy on these deals and try to make you know twenty thousand bucks on 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 a deal because that that's, that that doesn't come. Uh, often um, in 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 these um, REO deals, because you know, like I said, it's just a lot of competition. And so, when you first start out, you know, that five to ten thousand dollar margin would be a good margin for you to uh, for you to start, you know, gain some experience and, and go from there. But uh, but yeah, you you know, you just gotta. It's a numbers game, right? And you just have to 
submit a lot of them. Um, you just have to uh, you know, you just have to make a lot of offers, and uh, and hope you know, hope something will stick. Okay, and you gotta you know constantly following up with these agents, um, you know, building relationship with them. This this business is very 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 <laughs> relationship uh, uh, based business. Okay, this uh, I don't think there's any other part of real estate investing has more you know. Um, uh, relationship uh, focus than than this strategy, this area of real estate investing. So very very important that you build strong relationship with these agents, um, getting them to trust you, and and you know you have to keep on resubmitting your offers, uh, resubmitting your your your, um, your your offers every time you see a a, a, a status change or price change. Um, just resubmit your offer. You, you know, you never know. They might, they might uh, accept your offer. Okay, and um, let me see here. Uh, how to find some cash buyers and landlord uh, um, um, landlord buyers? One of the ways you can do is you can spy it on, on your competitors. You know, pay attention to who are the other wholesalers in your town. Okay, um, and then you know, uh, you know, find out. You know, if you know, um, check. You know, find out what their company's name is. Um, check the county clerk's. Um, uh, you know, check the uh, the the uh, yeah county clerk's uh, grantor grantee record to find out who are the people that they have been deeding their properties to. All right. So I mean, whenever you sell a property to somebody, you deed the the deed to that person. And so, do a research on them. Uh, and uh, and find out who that you know who who those buyers are and contact those buyers, especially when you see their their recurring buyers, where you see more than one deed, like two or three deeds from your competitor to that buyer. That means that's a really great buyer for you, okay, and it's not that hard to to find out these competitors. Not that hard to uh, to to spy on them that way. Okay, um, the spied on foreclosure trustee is another uh, another one. Number one, you can you know if you go down to the auction, um, this you know most of the buyers that are down there bidding on these. I'm not talking about the one that just hang out and don't do anything. I'm talking about the ones that actually bid on properties. They're all cash buyers because they can't buy houses any other way other than cash uh, down at the auction. Okay, and so. So go out there and pay attention to who are the people that's bidding. Talk to them, giving them your business card, give them your flyers, get their business cards, get their contact information. They are great buyers for you. Um, you know, and also too, um, just like how you spied on your competitors, you you pay attention to who are the big trustees in your town, who are the ones that handles a lot of the foreclosures. You can then check the county clerk's office for the grantee grantor uh, search to uh, to find out who they deed the properties to. Because whenever a trustee sells a property to you know to a buyer at the auction, it's the name of the trustee that deeds it to the buyer. Okay, and so you'll find out who they deed their properties to and contact those buyers. Cause those buyers who are proven buyers for you. You know they bought a property. You know they bought the property for cash, and you can even tell when they bought it. Uh, if you do more research, you can even find out how much they bought it for. Okay, and so so you know so that those are really great ways to do that. Um, you can also buy a list of absentee owners who bought a property in the last six months um, with cash or with you know with at least 20% down if they're using a conventional loan. Um, you know, but um, you know, somebody who bought a property for cash um, and they don't live at the property, um, then you know, then 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 there's a high chance they are either a landlord or they're a rehabber. Um, you know, and so get to know them um, and um, you know, and and send them a postcard. Try to find their phone number, build relationship with them. Just like how it's important for you to build strong relationship with real estate agents. Well, same thing here. You have to build a really strong relationship with buyers. Okay, and because you know a lot of these buyers are going to be your your um, um, uh, repeat buyers. They're going to buy you know multiple properties from you. So you want to build a, a good relationship with them. 
you want to also do an MOS search. You do want do an MOS search for all of the cash transactions, the uh, buyers that bought houses for cash, um, you know, in, in 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 the last six months as well, and 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 the ones that that bought it in the last 30 days. Uh, you bought a property for cash in the last 30 days. What you want to do is you want to drive to that to that area to that uh, house. If they bought it in the last 30 days, chances on number one, they're either fixing up the property, they are, or they are trying to sell it, or they're trying to rent it, uh, or they move into it. Okay, uh, and so regardless what the situation is there. It's it's much easier for you to get a hold of somebody, you know, get the phone number or get a hold of them, uh, if they just bought in the last 30 days. And so, you know, um, you, if you don't have access to the MOS, ask a real estate agent to do this for you. Um, they can, you know, they can search for the uh, the um, um, the terms and select cash as the as the closing term of how they bought the property. Okay. Uh, you know, you can also contact landlords. So you can go to dodeals.com, find out all of the landlord leads, um, call, email those landlords, and see if they're interested in you know buying more properties. Uh, you can also um, you can also call to email property management companies in in that area uh, or in your town because you know property management company handles a lot of. Um, you know a lot of landlords, and, and, and you know, if, and you know, landlords are in the business of uh, of um, uh, buying and renting properties, and so these property management companies will make great, great leads for you, um, great bird dogs for you, and you can you know you can pay them a fee. And property management company, the cool thing about them is, you know, they they don't even require that much of a fee really, because like when they rent a house for somebody, they only make half a month. You know, a lot of times they only make. You know, um, uh, half of the first month's rent, and if they find a tenant on their own, they make you know uh, the full month's rent. But that's not a lot of money. So you know, to pay them a thousand bucks or fifteen hundred bucks um, for a referral of a of a landlord who buys a property from you, that's uh, that's very inexpensive. A great uh, great way to go about it. Okay, and. Um, All right. So um, th there's another way to uh, to find cash buyers. I I, uh, I guess I'll go ahead and share with you now, and then um, and uh, you know and and when 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 um, uh, when it's time for the uh, Q and A's here, you know Ray will talk a little bit about it too. But um, you know this kind of happened accidentally. But he was out at a property. Uh, you know, he he was out at a property, looking at the property, trying to make an offer on it. It was, you know, a property was uh, uh, recently listed on the MOS, and you know, and um, it, it was a cold day, so he went in the house. And while he was there looking at that property, um, there there were several buyers that that um, that came by, like just did a, you know, came by to look at the properties too, but. They they didn't have their real estate agent or anything yet. They they they're just normal buyers. They they wanted to see the property first before they make offers on it. And so so since Ray was there, he had the door open. They came in, and uh and he asked them, well you know what's uh, uh what's the most you would be willing to pay for this house? And so they tell him all of them. They tell him how much they would pay for this house. And guess what he did with with those numbers? He you know based on what he what they tell him, he goes and make an offer on the property for less. Than than the, the you know than uh, than what they were telling him. So that way he already know for sure that they are serious buyers because they're serious enough to go out there to look at it, um, you know, before they even make an offer on it. Um, you know, and so uh, you know, and, and so that's another great great way to find buyers who who are um, you, know, you know who are actively buying. Uh, actively looking for these properties, and of course, don't forget you know uh, signs as well, and don't forget Craigslist as well uh, to you know to 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 find these buyers. But uh, yeah, these are some ways that you can find buyers like before you even have a deal. Okay. All right, how to close on these properties? Uh, there you know there, there are many different ways to to uh, to to, um, uh, to to close on these properties. Uh, one uh, you know. The the most common way people close on these properties uh, is through um, simultaneous closing or double closing, uh, where they 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 uh, they actually fund the first transaction and then so it's a, it's an A to B transaction. They'll close on it. They actually fund the deal, um, and then um, 
and then they turn around and sell it to their buyer. Um, and a lot of time they have to wait a few days for the first recording to uh, to take effect before they can uh, you know before they can close the second transaction. And so, so it's not a same day closing like like what we used to do with double closing there. You can't, uh, you know, uh, you know be, because, you know, be, because you can't choose the the title company that you can close. You have to pay, use the, the 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 bank's title company. Um, so you don't have a lot of option. You know, you can't um, you can't ask the bank's title company if they would be willing to you know, to do the same day double closing or not. Um, if they would be willing to you know let you use your buyer's cash to close on your transaction and and uh, you know you, you can't do that. You don't have that flexibility, and chances are the the bank's title company won't uh, won't won't be willing to do that. And so you can close with the bank's title company, um, and then you know wait. Um, you know you ask them, okay, well, what is the longest amount of you know what's the shortest amount of time I can reclose on this property and sell it to my buyer? And they'll tell you whether that's three days or seven days or ten days. And then, so you would have to wait during that time. You can also find a title company where you can do your closing from two different title companies. So you close with you close the the first transaction with the bank's title company, and you take all of that closing document. You take it to your title company, uh, and then you know a, a few days later, um, once they you know once they're able to verify that the deed has been recorded, then you know then um, uh, then your title company will then uh, proceed with the uh, the second closing uh, and close to your buyer. Okay, and so that's one way to do it. Another way you can do it is you can uh, sell LLC. So when you make an offer on these properties, you make it under name uh, in a company's name, and rather than selling the property or selling the contract, you're going to sell the 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 the, the company instead. That's what selling the LLC is. Okay. And so I'll, I'll give you an example. Let's say, uh, let's say I made an offer in my in my company's name, you know, um, um, you know, ABC Real Estate. Okay. Instead of when I'm selling to my buyer, instead of selling the house to them or selling my contract to them, I said I will sell you ABC Real Estate, um, sell you the interest in ABC Real Estate, and then you can come in and close as the signer for ABC Real Estate. And so what's going to happen when you sell an LLC is that um, you know, right before closing, uh, you know, the, 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 the buyer is going to bring you their part, and the buyer is going to bring you uh, the money that they owe you, uh, and you're going to introduce the buyer as, the, you know, as, as your associate that's going to be signing off for the company. Okay, and so the title company don't know anything of what's going on here that, you know, that um, a, um, uh, that, that, a, that an LLC was sold, and it's irrelevant to them. Title company only care about the real estate transaction, the property itself. They don't care about the company. The company is a, a personal property. Okay, and so you can buy and sell LLC however you want. And that happens outside of closing. It happens like right before you do your closing. Okay, and, and you can do the same thing with uh, selling DBA. So you can go get a DBA. And uh, selling DBA is not applicable in every single county in the U.S. You have to check with your own county. Some counties don't uh, uh, don't allow you to sell uh, your, your DBAs. And so just uh, just ask ask the uh, the uh, uh, you know go go down to the county clerk's office um, and uh, ask the people that handles um, DBAs. Uh, and or you can even call them over the phone, but ask them if uh, you know if you can sell the the ownership of a DBA. So if you can, then that's great. Okay, um, you can sell the DBA instead. LLC costs more money. Like here in here in Texas, um, you know, an LLC costs three hundred bucks, and a DBA you know costs like, um, like you know, I think it was like fifteen dollars or something like that. Pretty minimal. Okay, so it's a lot cheaper to sell a DBA than it is to sell an LLC. Uh, but uh, but like I said, DBA is just one of those things that's not universal. Okay, it doesn't work everywhere. But you know, but it does work like here in Houston, it does work. And so, check with your county. Um, and um, I, I um, you know, 
once you sell an LLC and once the deal is over, you can always buy that LLC back from your buyer. Okay, so now they own the house, and you just buy the LLC back, and the LLC doesn't own the house anymore. Um, you can also charge a management fee, and this is where you invoice the buyer for your part. And so you you would to do it this way, you would have to change the name on the HUD uh, to reflect your buyer's name. This gets a little bit tricky. Um, in, 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 in some, you know, if you don't have a strong relationship with the real estate agent, they, they're not going to like that. Uh, but if you have a good relationship with them, they'll do this for you, okay? Where you tell them, like, okay, you know, I've decided to, um, I decided to put it under my associate's name instead of my own name because I bought enough properties this month already and I don't want any more properties under my name. Uh, and so my associate is going to put it under his name. So you can get, you, 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 you know, you, you get the contract change to your buyer's name and you invoice the buyer for a management fee which does go on the HUD uh, to, clo to, to do it. Another way you can close on it is to get your buyers to pay you outside of closing. I've done that as well. Uh, you know, if it's a buyer that, especially if it's your regular buyers where they, uh, you know, they, they bought from you before, uh, they're very willing to do that, uh, you know, where they, they, they will pay you outside of closing and just come in and close on the deal, and there won't be any uh, any fees or any management or anything like that in uh, in there. Now, before I um, let me see here, uh, before I start the uh, Q and A, let me uh, uh, let me open up this uh, this uh, PDF file. Hold on here. I'm looking for uh, this HUD so I can show you what a management fee looks like. Uh, mo most of these, you know, most of these closings. Uh, all right. Uh, yeah, here's a property that we did, and uh, this property here, uh, we, you know, we, we bought it from uh, VA, okay, Secretary of Veterans Affairs, um, and we changed the buyer's name, as you can see here. Okay, uh, that was not the name that we made offer on. We changed the buyer's name. This, in this case, the buyer used a, a hard money lender. Okay, and um, you know our contract price was sixty thousand uh, dollars with the uh, with the um, uh, with the bank, and we sold the house to the buyer for six, uh, sixty-seven thousand five hundred dollars. And um, so here's let me, let me let me scroll down a little bit to um, to show you what happens here. All right. So the buyer paid us, you know, um, two thousand dollars non-refundable deposit uh, before closing. You know, when they agreed to sell it to us, and then at closing we invoice them. See this management fee. So we invoice them a management fee to the buyer for the remaining, which is fifty-five hundred dollars. Okay, and um, and uh, like I said, in this case the buyers use a hard money lender called. Um, uh, New York Mutual, okay, and you know, of course, they charge their fees and stuff. But here, you can see some of the numbers here. Um, the um, you know, the 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 buyer uh, came to closing with uh, a little bit over eleven thousand dollars, okay. Uh, when we changed to the buyer's name, the bank made us put uh, put up uh, three thousand dollars earnest money, okay. So we did that. Because um, they wanted to make sure that uh, we were going to be able to close on it, and uh, the buyer got a loan for fifty-nine thousand eight hundred bucks. This property doesn't need any repairs at all. You know, the buyer going to come into this property basically just uh, paint, um, not even paint, touch up the paint and and, uh, and clean the carpet, and they have a property ready to rock and roll. It's a it's a fairly new house. I think it was built in late two thousand seven, um, so I mean it's only like three years old. Um, and so very, very good house, okay? And uh, that's pretty much it, okay? Now, you know, if, if I was to do a double closing on this, then I would have two of these HUDs, and I won't have a, uh, a management fee here. You know, this fee won't be here, uh, but, uh, you know, but the, the transaction will be uh, you know, very much the same. Or if I have to close on this outside of closing, then this... Uh, if, if the buyer had paid me outside of closing, like either uh, if I sell an LLC or I sell a, a DBA 
or you know I don't sell anything and they just pay me outside of closing then there won't be that that money won't be on the HUD they would have they would just pay me outside of that outside of closing so the HUD would stay the same pretty much uh, with the exception of you know there, there won't be any management fee here okay and so with that I am uh, going to check on Ray here Ray are you there buddy Ray can't hear you man <laughs> uh, okay let me uh, let me call Ray um, and uh, make sure he can make sure he's on here hold on do you guys like uh, what you're learning so far let me uh Wow, this whole time I uh, talked and nobody asked any questions. Interesting. <laughs> All right. Um, how do we create a DBA? Can we do deals in our name? Um, well, you, you, you know, to to get a DBA, you contact your, um, you, you know, you uh, you contact your county, um, your your county office. Hey, Ray. Hey, are you online? Are you in the webinar? Okay. I can't hear you. You're not unmuted, are you? Do you, do you have a mic or anything on your computer? Uh, okay, then, then you have to switch over to a call. So switch over to telephone and call in. All right, thanks. Okay. So, um, uh, y yes, you can do deals uh, in your own name. Uh, however, if you make an offer in your own name, then it makes it harder for you to uh, for you to sell that property. Uh, c you know, because you you can't sell your own name. <laughs> you can sell a company's name. Uh, you can sell a company. You can sell a DBA, but you can't sell your own name. Um, and so it's best if you don't make offers under your own name. Okay, it gives you more flexibility. That's all. Do you guys like what you learned um, today? Okay. Did I go over kind of quick? Uh, uh, did you, were you guys able to uh, um, pick up some uh, some good tips there? Uh, Aussie said it. Yes, it was a lot of info. <laughs> Yeah, I try to condense it down to one webinar. So um, <laughs> maybe next time I'll I'll have to do it in uh, in several different uh, webinars there. But uh, Ray, are you on now? Yes, sir. Awesome, yes. dude. Awesome. All right. So just so everybody know, Ray Magnuson is uh, is um, uh, is my partner in these audio deals. And um, so you know, Ray is the Ray is the guy that's uh, out there hunting down these deals and uh, and um, you know. Uh, making offers on them, building relationship with these agents, and uh, and uh, you know, and getting under contract, and then find buyers and close on it, and uh, and all of that other good stuff. And you know, um, you know, so Ray and I are, are constantly you know looking for um, you know buyers for these properties. We're constantly looking for private lenders for these properties. Um, and so I wanted to uh, invite Ray on this uh, on this webinar today uh, for you guys to uh, ask him questions too. And um, yeah, yeah, you know, and uh, you know, hopefully, uh, hopefully, you'll be able to get from his perspective. So, uh, thank you so much, Ray, for coming on today, buddy. No problem, Tim. Awesome. All right. Well, let's start with this, Ray. Let's start with um, uh, you know, you share with them how you went about developing relationship with these real estate agents. Yes. Uh, uh, first of all, you have to be. Uh, as as uh, Tim said, uh, mentioned, you mentioned about uh, uh, you know get the best team uh, uh, heavy hitters are your agents in your area and focus on those people because those are people that do have uh, unlimited supply on REOs and uh, that's when you can cherry pick which one you would like to make an offer on and. Um, also, you have to um, 
you know, you have, when you talk to them, you know, talk to them just like, you know, you are very serious, you know, on your, on your, on your intention on, on, on buying it. Because they don't, they don't even care what, what you do with your, with these properties for as long as you can close on it. And, um, you know, they'll give it to you and, and they'll do uh, the best they can because uh, they'll get books at the commission. And it's all about money, even your, um, your if, even if your competitor will offer more and if, if you let them keep books at the commission, then, you know, a good chance they'll give it to you. You know, so, uh, and, you know, you have to treat them to lunch, and uh, when you close, you know, give them something, you know, something to remember. So next time, they will remember you. <laughs> and so, right. um, you know. Uh, yeah, just, and uh, uh, I, I know you buy them, like, gift, gift cards and stuff like that after you close on deals. Uh, right. What about taking them to lunch and stuff? Oh, yes, yes. Even before that thing, even before that, um, I take them to lunch and uh, I also, even the time that they are feeding me some deals, uh, before I even close on some of them, some of these uh, agents, I um, I give them, you know, like 15, 25 bucks, just get a certificate for them to remember you because these deals, it's just a matter of time for you to get them. I mean, the you know, it's just a matter of time because they're out there. I mean, you know, you're looking at them, and and um, I mean, you wish you have all the money, you just buy all of them. But uh, this this agent, once they're on your side, I mean, man, I mean, you go to sleep during night not thinking about it. Then next morning you have email coming to you before they even list it. I say, hey, there it is, kids up, you know, and. Um, right. Uh, that's 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 a good stuff, you know. Before uh, anybody else, right, and, right. You know, and and once you establish uh, a good relationship with them, you know, do do even forget to collect your your earnest money, <laughs> right? And you know, it's just a matter of saying, hey, wait, well, I got uh, I got this house over here this year, uh, this and that, and uh, we're asking this much, and I, you know. If you already have your buyer, and then you know the area, it's automatic. That set is mine. Just like that. And they send you the contract, you send me the contract in about three minutes, send it right back to them. You know, and, and that's it. Right. You know? Yeah, you got to really be quick with these deals, you know, because you, you are competing with a lot of people, and so the faster you act, um, the, uh, the, the, the faster you get the deal. And so... Um, uh, if you guys have any questions for Ray on, on how to, you know, how he builds relationship with agents, you know, you're more than welcome to uh, type that in. Now, what about, uh, what, what about, you know, what, what about um, deciding on which neighborhood you farm in? I, I know, uh, I know you, 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 uh, you pay attention to, to, to the zip code and, and, uh, and 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 you know whether or not the, the you know the population in that zip code is is uh, increasing or declining. What are some of your tips you have on that? Yeah, um, <clears throat> you know when you pull up when you pull up the foreclosures, I mean, you know all over, you can very much uh, tell which zip code um, that is you know, uh, uh, has a lot of foreclosures, and the one with a lot of foreclosures uh, doesn't necessarily mean that it's a bad area. It is, uh, as a matter of fact, it's the hot area when, when there's a bunch of foreclosures, and, um, well, that, that, that depends, but um, I know this area, when it says um, uh, 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 a lot of foreclosures, and they're just new, they're not old. Uh, um, you know, neighborhood, and looking at the, the population also, that's when you will see the, uh, and it's increasing from a, a, a year before, uh, second year, third year, you will see that the population is, is, is growing up, not, not going down, so more people coming in, and if you have uh, um, four closures that are uh, growing in that area, guess what, your landlords is your 
you know, it's your best buyer. They'll, they'll buy it in a snap. And um, because they're just, they're going to rent it out. And, um, you know, so, but the, the best way to do it would be to get familiarized with your, with your zip code that you're trying to farm. And when you drive around, just to, to do a quick survey, you don't see uh, uh, that much people, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, selling their houses in retail. Um, most of these houses would be like bank owned in which landlord are your buyers. You know, these landlords, that's for sure buyers. They don't even think twice for as long as your number work. you know. So, um, you know, that's, that's very much it. Um, because once, once you, you know your neighborhood, mm -hmm. you know, five zip codes that you know very well, I mean, they, they will call you. And uh, when they call you, you pull the trigger. So you try to make it as easy as possible. You don't want to be like, okay, let me calculate over here, and then you try to complicate analyzing stuff. Before you know, somebody, oh, that's it, it's done. You know, somebody already uh, bought it. So you want to be uh, uh, ahead of the ahead of the game. Because um, even if it just come out on the market, and there's, there's still a lot of ways to, to, to be able to get it, you know. So, uh, but, but then again, there's, there's a lot of ways. Uh, high days in market, been sitting there, or first, uh, first day to come out of the market, you have to know how to talk to these to this agents because if you build a relationship uh, uh, with them, that helps a lot. That right. helps a lot. If they're not old listing or new listing come out of the market, they'll give it to you. Right. You know? So, right. very important. Fifteen twenty five dollars gift certificate, certificate, take them to lunch, and that's it. Yeah, yeah and, and I mean, I've, I've said this many times already, and I'll say it again, but, you know, the relationship with the real estate agent in, in, in this business is the most important thing. It's like the most, you know, once you get that, everything else is much easier than that. All right, so, so you got to work on building that relationship. And you, and, and, and you don't have to look as good as Ray. You don't have to look as handsome as Ray to, to build a relationship with them. You can look like me and build a relationship with them. <laughs> Come on, Tim. <laughs> you know, and, and another good thing about this, you know, REO wholesaling is a, a, a whole lot better and more efficient because, other, you know, if, if you compare to wholesaling, and you deal with an owner that you buy a house, you only buy it from the one time. But with the, with the agent, I mean, it's, it's a repeat business over and over, over and over. And you just treat them one time. And, and once you establish a relationship, that's it. But with the owner, it's a one, it's a one shot. That's it. Once you buy it, right. you never hear from them again. Right. Right. Uh, a couple of times you have a repeat business, <laughs> but... But majority of them, you're not going to hear from them again. But you right. are the real yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, th th this is a lot more leverage, no doubt about it. You know, I, I talk about, um, sometimes I talk about the different, uh, uh, the different types of business, you know, you have the transactional business, which is where you do a transaction. In order for you to make more money, you have to do another transaction, another transaction. And so uh, so that's how it is when you're dealing with uh, homeowners. And then there's a referral business where you, you do a transaction, but you get referral from them to get other uh, transaction. And so this is more like the referral business. And once you do a transaction with that, agent, the agent's going to refer you more deals that they have, you know, and so uh, referral business is, is, of course, much more leveraged than, uh, than a transactional business, you know, where you're constantly having to, to hunt down the deals yourself. All right, so let me see here. There's a few questions here. I'll, I'll answer them. Uh, Colleen asks, there is one down the street for me with a black lockbox and no sign in yard. Last year, I saw it. It was vacant, and I tried to find the owner, but he disappeared. I know the lender because one day when I drove by, there was a FedEx envelope on the door with an auction notice. Uh, is there any way I can look for a buyer for this specific address without buyer going around me before I make an offer? 
Um, and no, you really can't call in, but what you can do is, uh, because, I mean, you know, of course, you do have to risk that the buyer might go behind your back because you have you don't have any control of this property. Well, what you can do is rather than advertising this specific property, you can take pictures of this property and you advertise it uh, for that neighborhood. So you're not going to give them any address. You're just going to advertise like, okay, it's in this subdivision and this is how the property looks like. You know, this is the specs on it. And so you give them all the description about that property, just not the not the address. Uh, not even the street name. Just give them the subdivision name and the pictures and the description of that property, and they should be able to decide from there. Okay. And then meanwhile, track down, you know, track down the uh, the uh, the bank, uh, you know, track down the bank, and you know, and and um, try to get a hold of the, uh, the 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 real estate agent that will be listing it. If it's been a year ago and they still haven't had anybody listed, chances are it's. Because you know, what, what, what's going on now is banks are constantly buying and selling uh, packages of, of uh, notes. And so uh, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if this property you're talking about has been transferred where another bank bought over a, a pool of note. And then when they buy a pool of notes like that, they transfer, you know, it can, sometimes it can be transferred many times. And, um, and, and, and throughout all of those uh, transferring, they just never listed that on the MLS yet, and so, uh, so track them down and uh, and find out. Okay. Uh, Ken asks, do you have a script for calling property management companies to see if they are looking for properties to buy? Sure, you can write this down. Say, so, you know, um, hi, I noticed that you're a property management company in town. I have a property. I'm, I'm an investor too, but I have a property that I, that I desperately need to sell. Um, do you? Do you have any landlords that might be interested in making an offer for, on my property? You know, I, I want to I want to get it sold this weekend, and so um, so whoever gives me the highest offer this weekend is who I'm selling to. And of course, this is assuming you have a property. If you don't have a property, you can say something similar. I have properties. Um, so I have properties that I desperately need to sell. Do you know any landlords that? Um, that might be interested in in, uh, in making a, you know is making an offer on my house. Uh, you know, can can I get your email and, and you know email you the property information? Or, but the the script is that simple, okay? And they might be interested in buying it themselves. Okay. All right. So let me see here. Neil said, uh, when first contacting an agent, do you use certain technique so they don't just ignore you? That question goes to you, Ray. Okay. Yeah. Uh, first contacting an agent, do you use a certain technique so they don't ignore you? Mm, you know, actually, yeah. Just, just, just be yourself. You know, when you talk to them, you know, um, I'm a local investor in town, and you know, we buy a lot of houses, and uh, we have a, a pool of money, private money, uh, to fund the deal, and and we're in this uh, uh, buy and hold. Um, at this time, so, uh, you know, and I'm interested on in this house that you have posted on MLS, and, you know, it's, it's, it's just very simple. See, when, when I talk to them, I just, I, I don't, I don't write it down. I just, depends how, how they, how they respond to me, I, re I respond to the conversation, you know, however they talk to me, so it, 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 it's, it's it's tailored to how they uh, talk to me, so I don't. That's why I don't have a script. So you just find out yourself. But it's just as, as simple as, you know, I'm a local investor in town, and you know, we buy a lot of houses, over a hundred houses a year, and we're uh, on a buy and hold, uh, you know, investors. So, and just as simple as that. And one one thing that I have. Uh, Notice also that when they send you a, a, a what you call it a contract to fill out, well, to sign, if you can give it back to them, you tell them if you send me a contract right now uh, uh, for this house, you know, because they want you to uh, uh, you know see how serious you are. You send a contract with your 
earn this money and all that stuff. I give it back to you within three minutes. Wow, this guy, he's been doing this or he's got a system in place. But if, you know, so that's, that's another, uh, that's another thing. And when you, when you see your contract, I didn't then say, well, this guy, he doesn't take whole day to read it. So he's been doing this over and over. So you must prove to them. You know, talking to them is one thing, but when you uh, uh, actually make an offer uh, to this house that you are uh, very realistic, it does not matter you make high offer, low offer, because you, you can still get out of it. For you to become believable to these agents, just be simple. Don't, don't try to do some acrobatic, you know, talk to them. You know, so, so you just have to Tell them say, hey, I'm a uh, local investor in town, and I saw your listing on on MLS, and I'm really, really interested on it. And okay, so uh, do you want me to write you a contract? You can uh, write me a contract, or I have to do is sign it. Within three minutes, you get it back, just like that. And I don't know, there's there's no magic. I mean. Uh, there's no more uh, yeah, and, and you know, and um, you, you can also show up at the office too. Um, mm -hmm. If you know if they're not uh, responding to your call, because they have a lot of people calling them and emailing them, and so the fastest way to get to them is just sh show up at at the office. So that'll be another great way for you to uh, to you know let them know how serious you are, because a lot of people would not do that, would not show up like that. Okay. All right. All right. Um, um, okay. Um, Colleen uh, went back to talking about her deal here. That there's a six months redemption period after the auction. Okay. Has has the auction been over six months yet, Colleen? If it hasn't, that's a good thing. You know, tracking the homeowner down and buying the redemption rights from them. Uh, if assuming the house have equity, of course. Uh, it's an, another good way. Uh, RC asked, uh, what is the outlook for REOs in the near future? Are they going to increase? Would banks be easier to deal with as the economy keeps improving? Well, gosh, man, there's so many foreclosures coming on the pipeline right now. There's a lot of foreclosures that, that have already been foreclosed on, but because there's so many of them, banks have to uh, slowly uh, uh, you know, uh, put them on the MLS because if they put all of the foreclosures they, that they have right now on the MLS is going to, you know, crash the market even more and bring the value even more. And so, uh, so, so there's a lot, a lot of foreclosures coming on. So there's no doubt that, um, you know, that the the outlook for for REOs in the next, you know, three uh, three years here, it's going to be just huge. Um, uh, we're not anywhere near the peak yet. Uh, of you know, of of that, and so you know, definitely they're going to uh, to increase, and and uh, um, the, and the the more properties that uh, that the banks have, the more they are going to be flexible uh, with with their their price there, and so de you know, it depends on how how fast the you know, the houses are selling, and I mean, it's I think that the banks are going to be even more be even more flexible when. Uh, when that that uh, you know when that tax credit goes away and the first time home buyers are not there anymore, uh, you know then 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 banks will will be forced to sell the house at lower price to investors because investors will be the only one who is buying. You know, so right now you know they still some of them are still stubborn because there's first time home buyers, there's still FHA buyers that um, that will buy. But once the tax credit's over, that's it. I mean it's it's. It's all for us. Right, Ray? Yes, sir. That's <laughs> right. Absolutely. Yep. Awesome. All right, y'all. Well, um, we're going to go ahead and, uh, and um, uh, you know, wrap up this webinar and, and um, um, you know, and call, call it a night here. But, uh, uh, Ray, thank you so much, buddy, for, for getting on this webinar and, uh, and uh, you know, sharing some of your tips with us and, uh, and answering some of the questions here. Really appreciate that. You're welcome, Tim. Awesome. All right, everybody. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's webinar. Um, we'll have the replay, Jerson. We'll have the replay up um, um, by tomorrow. So, you know, uh, you make sure, Jerson, um, uh, please uh, 
please uh, remind Martin to send out the replay for it. And so, if you, you know, if you guys want to watch it again and again, you're more than welcome to do that. And um, well, let's uh, let's go make some offers. And if you have more questions on on audios, uh, you're more than uh, you know, you're more than welcome to submit it to the hotline, and I'll answer your questions from there. Uh, but uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, do get do get uh, ready for audios in a, in a in a big big way here. Um, all right. You guys have a great, great evening, and I'll see you next time. Okay. Bye, everybody. All right. Bye. All right. Thanks, Ray. Bye. All right. Bye.